These South Korean school children are about to be taught a remarkable lesson. They're being bused to a village on the outskirts of Seoul where their native tongue is banned. You have to remember one thing this week. It's English, 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 okay? At the English village, you don't just learn the language, you live it. The village sees itself as a passport to international citizenship. First stop is immigration. The object here, one teacher tells me, is to make the children feel welcome, then scare the hell out of them. What do you want to do in English village? You're not sure. What is your major? Are you going to cause trouble while you're here? No answer, right? Well, let's have you stay and we'll see. Welcome to English Village. In this age of globalization, international boundaries are being blurred. Partly because of that, partly the cause of that, English is becoming the global language. Here in education-obsessed South Korea, the pressure to learn it is overwhelming and the things some parents are doing to their children, simply extraordinary. If you don't say, can I have some money, please, no money. And you'll cry. The English village is a cross between a theme park and a boot camp. They visit a mock bank, withdrawing the local currency, which is used to pay for textbooks, food and entertainment. But what's given can be taken away. Anyone who utters a word of Korean is fined. Thank you. No Korean. Next time, two dollars. Oh, look! <laughs> I'm going to dinner tonight. Obey the rules. Do not make trouble. They spend between a week and a month here, living in. The classes never really finish. Every minute is spent learning, practicing, perfecting the new language. Not Korean, not Konglish. For Koreans who find English a mouthful, there are more drastic options in the English village. Jin Sung Min is an oral surgeon. A supposedly simple operation makes the tongue longer, more flexible, better able to handle tricky L and R sounds. So we cut this band and release the tongue, and then tongue can move freely. So we call it tongue tie, just release this one. Like this, we cut the, this band and release the tongue and teach this one. Dr. Jin insists he only operates on children who have a real medical condition. But other doctors have no such scruples. Promoting the surgery is a shortcut to better English pronunciation. <laughs> The practice is widespread enough to have prompted Korea's human rights watchdog to make a movie warning of the dangers. <laughs> Tongue-tied begins with a mother and father embarrassed by their son's pronunciation. What follows is horrific, and according to Dr. Jin, fairly accurate. The film uses footage from a real operation. Tongue surgery is so sensitive, no one associated with the movie, not even the Human Rights Commission, will discuss it with the foreign media.
누구야 성우 봐봐 That's pure, just simple ignorance. Yeah, a lot of Korean kids, a lot of Japanese kids, born in states, United States, uh, growing up there, uh, would not have any problem with English English pronunciation. Has nothing to do with the tongue. There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh. Learning English is a national obsession. The focus ferocious, the competition cutthroat. Very good. The pressure begins before birth. Parents play English nursery rhymes to children in the womb. One-year-olds have private tutors. Four- and five-year-olds are sent to English-only kindergartens that cost $1,000 a month. This school is one of the good ones, but for the most part, South Korea's vast English industry is unregulated and seemingly unstoppable. Wherever there's high-density housing, there's high-intensity education. It's four o'clock, school's out, but the children are not heading home. The vans are taking them to Hagwons, private cram schools. Harry Potter book, one, two, three, go! English has been a compulsory subject in primary schools for a decade, but the competition is so fierce, few parents are satisfied. I buy a book at the bookstore. Good job. There are tens of thousands of hagwons teaching maths, science, and English. According to some estimates, 90% of all school students get private tutoring. The amount of money spent exceeds the government's entire education budget. By senior school, though, the fun has worn off. Many students go to a hag one before school, another after it, and another after that, getting home around midnight. Hoping to resolve the situation. Education becomes a social disease. Education is, uh, is a normal, not a normal situation. It's become a kind of uh, private educational industry. Education is marketing. Uh, that is not good. Dr. Lee knows what he's talking about. He's in charge of the university entrance exam and has real concerns about the system he's administering. My term is, is Korean education is educational abuse and educational ignorance. When Korean child uh, is born, they cry, I have to go to the Seoul National University. That is the one tendency, in other words, Parents uh, too much pressure to their children uh, make them to go into the uh, first priority universities. They're preparing from the kindergarten to up to uh, high school. Twelve years of schooling is assessed by a single eight-hour test. Entire lives rest on the result. In Korea, your university has a huge impact on career, status, even marriage prospects. It's the day the pressure cooker education system reaches boiling point. The nation's temples and shrines are packed with praying parents. From five in the morning, younger students gather outside the school gates, offering encouragement. It's not just the students' lives that revolve around this day. The entire nation holds its breath. 
Aeroplanes are grounded to minimise noise. Many employees start work late, trying to ensure exam takers don't get caught in traffic. For those who are running late, emergency vehicles are on standby. The weight of a nation's expectations is a heavy burden. Every year, several students commit suicide after the exam. Each year, thousands of children try to escape the pressure cooker by heading overseas. It's a great Korean brain drain, an annual exodus so huge it's known as the wild goose phenomenon. Most of the children go to countries such as Canada, Australia and America, where they can learn English. The mothers go too, leaving the fathers at home to pay the bills. The number of Koreans studying abroad has increased tenfold in just six years. The financial burden is huge. Each year, the country spends more than $2 billion on overseas education. The emotional price is harder to calculate. This wild goose father has been separated from his family for seven years. A few days ago, I got a, this uh, birthday card, you know. Uh, my family uh, wrote some of the memos, you know, uh, for me. So uh, the, my second kiss is, you know. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, I love you, you know. It's, it was the first time, really. Uh, they say, it's, I love you, you know, really. I'm waiting for you, you know, really. It's my first time taking a plane. It's my first time taking a plane. It's all the money and pressure making a difference. I visited the set of one of Korea's most popular TV shows to see if the country's English ability is improving. It's my first time. It's my first time. There are more than 100 programs like this on Korean television. Apparently, things are getting better, but proficiency is still poor. Surveys suggest Korea's English ability is among the worst in Asia. It's my first time taking a plane. We got to have this um, English communication skills because, OK, for example, Japan has technology. Uh, China has population and the resources. Uh, compar comparatively speaking, we have little of anything. So uh, one thing we can have is this communication skills, right? One, two, one, and two, three, four. It's my first time taking a plane. It's In a generation, South time. Korea has transformed itself from backwater to world beater. Per capita GDP has increased 200-fold in just half a century. The investment in education has paid rich dividends, but at what price? The hermit kingdom is so eager to reach out and embrace the world, it's losing its sense of balance.